While agricultural production does emit methane into our atmosphere, we also need to acknowledge that food production takes carbon dioxide out of our atmosphere. Therefore, the key issue here is not methane production, but the actual increase in the overall amount of methane produced from agriculture. We must also note that across the EU between 2005 and 2016, there has been a 9% reduction in overall cattle numbers. Those who focus on farming being the climate problem conveniently ignore this fact. Here in Ireland, our Climate Action Plan set a target for reducing agricultural emissions by 10% between 2017 and 2030. Based on suckler cow numbers, emission reductions of close to 10% have been achieved in 2018 and 2019 alone. So while we have now achieved the 13-year target for the suckler sector within 24 months, albeit for the wrong reasons, and while this may help us to meet our national climate target, in a perverse way, it will do more to damage our planet in terms of global warming. That is because we count climate emissions based on the country where the food or product is produced, not where it's purchased or consumed. So even though 90% of our beef is exported, Ireland is penalised for being the most carbon efficient beef exporter within the European Union because the rules state that responsibility is on the producer rather than the consumer. Therefore, right across Europe, we can replace relatively carbon efficient beef production in Ireland with beef that is 30 time, 35 times worse for our environment from the Amazon basin. And that's OK, according to climate mathematicians, but not our atmosphere. We have a common agricultural policy that regulates food production right across member states of the European Union, except when it comes to climate emissions, uh, wherein, when we have a national cap, not an EU cap. This completely undermines carbon efficient food production in favour of cheap food, regardless of its climate impact and regardless of where it comes from. We need an EU-wide methane cap for agriculture that sp supports carbon-efficient beef production here in Ireland that is good for reducing uh, global climate emissions, and grass-fed beef on low-intensity grassland like that produced here in Ireland that has a lower negative impact on soil erosion, biodiversity and nutrient leaching than other beef production models. Another fact that is conveniently ignored by those who focus on farming being the climate problem. And grass-based systems on disadvantaged, disadvantaged land types in much of Ireland remove carbon from our atmosphere and convert it into human protein on land that is not suitable for tillage crops. That does not mean that agriculture and farming should have a free pass. The, uh, the fact is that managing our land use better can take even more carbon dioxide from our atmosphere, reducing its harmful effects on our climate and our oceans far quicker than just shutting down farming. For example, those who were so jubilant uh, about the closure of Shannon Bridge and Lanesborough power stations ignored the fact that one of the key objectives behind co-firing of the stations was to build up demand rapidly for locally sourced biomass. The principal reason for the lack of biomass in Ireland has been the absence of any proven demand for energy crops that would attract farmers. If we were to operate our current peat-fired plants with 100% locally sourced biomass, this would reduce agricultural emissions on local farms by 600,000 tonnes of carbon each year. This would be the equivalent to the removal of 130,000 cars off our roads, generating €372 Euro per hectare with a price of carbon at €80 Euro per tonne. This would create 4,000 seasonal jobs in harvesting while guaranteeing the income to farmers right across the Midland counties. Another good example is Gowna Farms uh, outside Ballyforden in County Galway, where members of my own family worked in the 1970s producing dried grass for animal feeds. With one of the best grass production systems in the world, we should be focused on the development of new grass-based solutions to meet our current and future food and energy needs. But our research community is behind the curve. 
Everything seems to be dictated by Foodwise 2025, which is about supporting existing agribusiness rather than the viability of family farms and our environment. The centralised nature of research and development funding in Ireland through Chagask is creating a knowledge cartel. Research needs to move closer to the farmer and include and reward a wide range of farmers to get involved. That is why, with the support of Minister Creed here beside me and the Cabinet, I established the Climate Action Fund to support new thinking and innovation with the sole focus of reducing Ireland's emissions. This is the biggest per capita sovereign fund of its type globally. But Minister, you will, in light of what I have just said on methane, will you commit to immediately reviewing the current scientific basis for enteric methane emissions from our national herd, as well as uh, the impact of grassland, soil and hedgerow management on carbon sequestration in advance of any restructuring of cap. The carbon value of soil, hedgerows and other farm uh, carbon stocks need to be measured and monitored, and any increase in value returned directly into farmers' pockets. Minister, I welcome the announcement last October by the Minister for Finance of an allocation of €3 million Euro for pilot new agri-environmental schemes for this year. The goal was to reduce emissions from the agricultural sector while improving biodiversity and water quality and supporting farm incomes. Can I ask you, Minister, has this money actually been drawn down? And was it drawn down under existing or new pilot schemes? Minister, it would not uh, make sense uh, would it not make sense to look at expanding the current successful smart farming pilot led by the Environmental Protection Agency, which has seen a 10 per cent reduction in carbon emissions across all farm types, and to support new init initiatives such as carbon neutral beef production? Minister, has consideration been given to designing an agricultural system around nutri nutritional sovereignty? This would mean that Ireland would move to an 80 to 100 per cent food secure nation. The supply chain should be incentivised to embrace localised food systems and resources should be mobilised to ensure the new horticultural industries uh, are developed to support uh, such a goal. Minister, I think we need to try and generate and innovate and support new thinking uh, in terms of the climate challenges uh, that we have here in this country. The difficulty is with those that are promoting the climate agenda to, take, to date. They take uh, an initiative that has been developed somewhere else in continental Europe and try and shoehorn it in to the model uh, here in Ireland, which just will not work because we have a very different model of agriculture here. We have a di very dispersed rural population, which is not the case anywhere else in Europe. And what we need to do is to engage at European Union level with the type of challenges that we have here and try and put forward very specific innovative solutions. But that requires support from the research community here and it requires answers to the questions that I've just asked. And Minister, can I finally raise one uh, point with you before you come back? And that is, you'll argue with me that the, the research community is doing its bit uh, for the agricultural sector. But your officials will be aware, Minister, of the Collaborative Working Group on Sustainable Animal Production, established by uh, the EU Standing Committee on Agricultural Research. Now, this is collating data which will ultimately feed in to EU policy development. They have produced a study on the drivers of change and development uh, in the EU livestock sector which is very important here in Ireland because in terms of agricultural activity uh, we are more dependent than any other EU country in terms of livestock at 74 per cent. And I read their, their report and they sent out a survey, Minister. They sent out 251, uh, a survey to 251 experts from all over the European Union, asking them to complete a questionnaire based on their expertise as an economist and, and or an agricultural scientist uh, or from a farming association uh, to consolidate knowledge about EU livestock policy across Europe. Of those 251 surveys that were sent out, sent out to every single member state across the European Union. I was surprised, Minister, when I seen the number of responses from Ireland. And Ireland, so dependent on livestock, not a single questionnaire was sent back from Ireland. 
Now, if our research sector here in Ireland can't advocate for us within its own agricultural research community in Europe, what hope have farmers got of getting a fair deal out of CAP? Well, thank you very much. Um, it's very difficult to answer um, a lot of these uh, points when, when time is, is, is um, limited, as, as, as Deputy Nocklin has chosen to so do. But I, I, I would say this, our research community um, generally, and, and the department works collaboratively with a whole host of partners, is quite progressive in all of the issues to do with climate and sustainability. And I'll give you just one example of an initiative um, in research uh, in conjunction with Science Foundation Ireland and, and if I'm not mistaken, Tagusk, um, and if not, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, with, with some other partners as well, green breeds. It's, it's an issue into kind of what, what is the maximum, what is the optimum um, bovine genetic uh, structure to enable us to meet the, the objectives that we have in terms of efficiency, in terms of beef and, and, and dairy, uh, in terms of emissions, etc. And, and we do very, very well. And I, I think it's unfair to come in and, and to, to castigate the, uh, the, the research community, who I think on very limited resources by international comparison, uh, work exceptionally well in a collaborative fashion to, to uh, serve the industry. And, um, I'm going to have to stop you, Minister. I'm really sorry, but the Deputy chose.